I'm Mark from Pack Hacker, and in this video, we'll be taking a detailed look at the Tropic Feel Shell Backpack, which I've been testing for two weeks. There's a lot of cool, innovative features going on here, but they don't always work together cohesively. For more information and our full written review, head on over to packhacker.com, link in the description below. Let's jump in. All right, this bag has a ton of stuff going on, so stick with me here. This is gonna be a long one. Um, so just to start out on the front, you can see we have these magnetic attachment points here, and what these are for uh, is Tropic Feel includes a dop kit and a sort of tech pouch that have the magnetic attachments fid lock on the back. So what you can do is just toss those on right there and you just gotta make sure they're lined up and that'll stay in place. I mean, I, I can pick the bag up from that, so that is a secure attachment. Now, it does give the bag an extremely wide profile. It already you know, is wide to begin with if it's fully packed out. And just adding this on the front, I think is a little bit much. Uh, this can get caught on things, but as you saw, it's, it's not gonna come off. Um, it kind of uses a almost like lever action release here. So unless you pull that, it is not gonna come off. And as long as we got these pulled out, let's take a look at them. Uh, we'll start with the tech pouch. This is the one we didn't like as much. Uh, it kind of just opens like half purse style. Uh, it doesn't open, you know, all the way to get a full look at it. And there's no real organization in it or anything. It's just these elastic loops uh, that you can, you know, use to help keep things in place. Um, we would have maybe liked a couple more dividers. These are good for like organizing long cords. You can just stick them in there and they'll stay put. And then, you know, any bigger items you can put in front. But we actually liked using the DOP kit. Ooh, accidentally got the magnets stuck on it. See, the magnets stick really good, so you don't have to worry about it falling off. Uh, we liked using the DOP kit one almost a little better. Uh, even with tech stuff, you just got a little bit more organization here. Uh, with these mesh stretchy dividers and then underneath you have a zippered pocket so this is great for any like small items that you don't uh, want to lose track of inside of this uh, one thing to note is that these obviously do share space so if you have really bulky items in here you're not going to be able to fit like another bulky item behind it um, it'll just be really stretched out so try to do thin items in the back bigger items in front and we've had real good luck with that. And then if you do use this as a dop kit, it does have a hook here if you wanna hang it up once you get to your Airbnb or hotel or whatever you're doing. Uh, you can just hang it up and have easy access to everything in there. And then this, I wouldn't quite call it a waterproof compartment on the bottom, but if you do have like shampoos and soaps and stuff in here, it does have a water resistant zipper and some water resistant uh, material here. So if anything does spill in there, hopefully it'll stay contained. We have not run into that yet. Um, but you know, we think it would do a pretty good job of keeping, you know, most of it clean in there. And again, this, this does just add a little bit to the profile of the bag. Um, also too, the easiest way to pack this, and we'll, we'll get into the inside, there's a really cool uh, system in here for storing your clothes, but how you need to pack it in is kind of unzipping the bag face down. And if you have this front pouch, you know, you're trying to like balance it on top. So you'll need to take it off when you're packing out this bag anyways. And if you do like these, you can just store them on the inside as well. Uh, on the side here, we have some nice stretchy water bottle pockets. You know, it's as wide as the bag, so you can fit some pretty big water bottles in here. Um, this is just a 21 ounce hydro flask. That fits in just fine with room to spare, and we haven't had it fall out or anything. It holds pretty tightly there. And then it's just the exact same thing on the opposite side here. So two water bottles if you need them. Uh, moving on to the harness system here. This bag, when fully packed out, can be pretty heavy, and they opted for a more minimalist uh, kind of style here. This foam is like a little thin here, 
but it's incredibly dense padding. So it's been doing a pretty good job. Um, again, when this bag's fully loaded out, it can get pretty heavy. So we kind of wish it maybe had a little bit thicker padding there. The back panel though is very densely padded and it's much thicker foam. I don't know if you can see that there. But yeah, this is, I mean, almost like an inch of foam at some spots here and it's very cushiony. Um, so we kind of wish maybe they would have included that in the shoulder straps um, just for a little extra padding because this bag can get very heavy. Uh, but it hasn't been terrible. On the top here, we got some load lifters to help distribute that weight a little bit better. Um, and then underneath that, we have a sternum strap with just a little clip system here. So you can take this off, adjust it. Uh, it's nice and stretchy elastic, so you can make sure you get that real nice fit. And they do have a strap keeper here, so it is a nice dangle-free experience on your chest there. And then there is even a hip belt here, which Again, if this bag's fully packed out, uh, you know, 40 plus liters uh, completely full can get pretty heavy. Um, however, if you're just carrying this as a day pack, it does just tuck away here. So you can just slide that away when you don't need it. Um, but we do like that they included this in here for a larger travel style bag here. And there is even a little bit of padding here. It's not just a, uh, a strap all the way across like we've seen in some travel bags. They give you a little bit of like a, a wing here to help give you some more support there. And then if you are traveling and you just wanna tuck the straps away for, you know, if you're getting on a bus or an airplane or something and you just don't want them dangling in the way, you can use this to kinda help wrangle those straps. And uh, yeah, obviously tuck the hip belt away and that'll just kind of keep them from flopping around as much. Um, this is just elastic, so it may over the course of years uh, lose that elasticity, but you know, not something we're super worried about. And it stows away behind your back when you're not using it. And you know, we haven't really noticed it's there or anything while we're wearing it, it doesn't poke into your back or anything. So just a nice little touch that, you know, doesn't hurt anything, so why not put it in? Um, and then we have two handles here. We got one on the side for like a briefcase carry, and then one on top. Also, if you need to just move this bag around or if you wanna hang it up somewhere. Um, they are pretty thin, they're just folded over nylon. I mean, they work, you know, as well enough. Um, I don't think they needed to be thicker padded because I don't you wouldn't carry it around like this too much because it's not the weight's not distributed very well. You know, if it was more central, uh, I would hope for a larger, bigger um, handle there just so you can carry a briefcase mode. But you're probably not going to be carrying it like this way anyway. So just a small handle is great there just for kind of helping you pull it out of the overhead bin or um, from underneath your bus seat or anything like that. And then moving back to the front here, we also do have, if this bag couldn't get big enough for you, on the bottom, we have a zipper here that has a pull-out compartment. And then so these just clip to here. So this becomes kind of the new bottom of the bag here. Uh, this is great for shoes or sandals or anything like that. Just uh, anything you don't want to get dirty or get the rest of your bag dirty on the inside. So, you know, we just got a pair of slippers. So once we get to our Airbnb, we can, you know, throw those on and leave our shoes at the door. And, you know, they fit very nice and snugly in there. Um, you know, nothing to worry about there. And again, if you want this bag to be even taller, uh, you can put something in these compression straps here. Uh, it's just elastic again, so um, it's not going to hold anything like really, really tight, but this is a great spot to throw like a yoga mat or uh, like a small travel tripod or something like that. And these are not adjustable too, so whatever you put in here really needs to be able to stretch it, otherwise it might slide out a little bit. But we'll just put this away for now. Yeah, and it just packs away into the bottom. Again, a nice feature if you need it. Otherwise, you know, you can get a shoe sack and uh, 
you know, put it on the inside of your bag. It's nice also too, that'll be a great spot for anything that may be a little wet, like a raincoat, you can leave it out to dry a little bit there. Um, so moving on to some of the pockets here, we'll start with the outside ones. We have a very hidden pocket here. We actually didn't even know this one was here until, uh, you know, we were doing our research on Tropic Fields website. It's a very nicely hidden pocket. Great spot for any valuables that you still need more quick access to, uh, like passport and wallet, anything like that. Um, it's relatively thin, especially when this bag's packed out. Um, if this bag was not fully packed out and you're using it as more of a day pack mode, you would probably be able to fit some bigger items in here, like maybe some tech gear, like a charger, a mouse, stuff like that. But if you are using this as a travel bag, a great little hidden pocket to put, you know, any valuables that you don't want to go missing. There's also another pocket back here. Um, this one's less hidden, you know, you can see the zipper, but having it be directly behind your back, if you're really, really worried, uh, you could also put your passport and wallet in here. Just try not to put anything too bulky because it does, you know, push the back panel forward a little bit. Um, but any sort of smaller items like that would do just fine. And then, you know, this is going to be a really hard pocket to access while you're wearing it. Um, so you don't have to worry about pickpockets or anything like that. Now flipping up to the top, we have a small little quick grab pocket here. Uh, this one is on the top flap so it can kind of move with the bag as you adjust it. Um, so there is a little bit more dimension than the bottom two pockets so you can put some bigger items in here. Uh, we've just been kind of using this as our quick grab spot. You know, we got some snacks in there. We've been putting our wireless headphones in there just for easy access, uh, stuff like that. And then if, when you open it up, this is just like a giant sack style bag. Um, you know, a, a roll top-esque opening, if you will, but then it just closes with these buckles instead of, you know, it being a full roll top style. Um, so as you can see, it's kind of hard to see into this because it's such a tall bag, it gets dark. Um, so another way to access this, if you really need to get in there, is with this back compartment zipper, and this opens fully clamshell here. Uh, let's start with the accessories here. So we have the camera cube on top here. Uh, this is a pretty simple camera cube, nothing too crazy going on here, just a nice padded cube. Uh, you have in the front a small zippered pocket, uh, very flat, so best for like SD cards, maybe some extra batteries, things like that, um, just to keep them separated. And then we have the classic camera cube style with some Velcro padded adjusters here. So we got a couple extra over here, just so you can see what they look like. Um, so you can really just bend these any way you want. Again, there's not a ton of padding there, but you know enough from keeping to enough to keep anything inside from kind of clanking together or anything like that. Um, and you could even make it into like a little shelf to try to like help keep stuff suspended a little bit more. Um, but as long as you don't have it at the very bottom of your bag, you should be fine anyways. So we just kind of have a little divider here. So we have our backup camera. Uh, obviously we're using our camera here with our lenses. So this middle compartment uh, would normally have that in here. And then just an extra little side spot for extra batteries. And then on top here, if you have a lot of camera cords and chargers and things like that, they're great to wrap up and stick through these. Otherwise, they are about the right size for an SD card there. Uh, that's actually, you know, holding pretty tight. Uh, so another option there. And then there's just a small uh, Velcro closure pocket here. We just have our ND filter in there for safekeeping. And then it does come with a strap. So you can attach this to the outside here, one here, and the other one here, and then it kind of creates a little camera sling for you. 
Uh, so again, nothing too crazy going on. It's if you do travel with a small mirrorless camera, uh, it's a great option to have in there just to keep everything safe and you know fits perfectly in the bag. So then we have this packet system here. Uh, so with the camera cube in here, it kind of takes up a third of the bag. So we were unable to use all three pockets at once with the camera cube. Uh, this is compressed right now, so we'll expand it just to kind of show you what it looks like here. And this kind of becomes like a, a portable dresser type situation. So on the top here, you have a loop to hang it up from if you have like a hook or anything like that. Or if you don't have a hook and you know, there's like a bar you can hang something around. Like if you're in like a, you know, bunk bed type situation, you can kind of wrap this around the bed frame and then lock it in there. So it's super easy to hang up. Uh, you'll have easy access to everything you packed. And so again, we had the camera cube in one. So that takes about this space here. So if you don't have the camera cube, you can fully pack this out. And this is basically the height of the whole bag here. On top, we have these two zippered compartments here. Again, we just kind of have uh, just a different variety of shirts and pants throughout this, um, just to kind of add some weight to it to see what it would be like to have this packed out. But really, we think this would be a better spot for you know socks and underwear in one. Um, there is a divider in here, but it doesn't go all the way to the mesh, so things can slide around back and forth there a little bit. Um, but it does do a good job of keeping, you know, bigger items separated there. Underneath that, you just have a large open space. Um, great spot to put, you know, pants or sweaters, uh, any larger items that may not need uh, the little bit more separation that the other compartments offer. And then down here, we have a kind of... Uh, like fabric separator here. And so you can roll your shirts up and just put them in each individual compartment here. You got a couple smaller ones for shirts and then some larger ones for pants or anything like that. And then there's, there is some extra room on the side here if you have something that takes up this whole space there. And so you can kind of move stuff around between here, uh, you know, however you like. This is a very interesting system. We really like what they were going for here. Um, however, if you're a very you know, experienced traveler and you have your particular system, how you like to lay it out, this doesn't really offer that customizability like how packing cubes would. But if you are new to the travel game and you're just looking for a one-stop shop option, uh, this is a really cool setup here. And I think it's only going to get better, you know, as Tropic Feel uh, iterates on it. So uh, it's just a cool system. Uh, one problem we have had is, well, two things, actually. Um, one, you really need to make sure that your clothes are kind of rolled up to the same size as this. When we first rolled it up, um, we had like shirts sticking out of the back in front and so it didn't quite fit as well into the bag as it's supposed to. Uh, so just make sure you're kind of keeping it around this size when you're rolling up your clothes. And then to save space, so you know when you're traveling you have it hung up and fully accessible uh, all the way open and then when you're going to travel it can compress down and there are straps on the side here. Uh, one issue we've had here is that you have a solid top and a solid bottom and then you know all your clothes in the middle. So when you start compressing this, you can kind of have that uh, like hamburger effect of you know when you're eating a giant burger and it kind of starts to like the all the middle kind of starts to slide out the back. Um, if you kind of start tightening this down, you can have that same thing where, the top is going to kind of come together and all the clothes are going to start spilling out the back there. So just kind of do it 
incrementally as you're tightening it, just a little bit on this side, a little bit on this side, uh, so you get it compressed where you want. Um, otherwise, yeah, as you can see, it kind of wants to like slide out the back. And also rolling your clothes to this size will also help with that as well. Um, so to pack this in, just drop it in. It is like really the exact size of this bag. Uh, it's made to be used as a full unit here. And so it just fits in very nicely. Now, if you are using this as a day bag, we'll just toss that off to the side. And then you just have a wide open space in here. And then the top becomes a little more useful if you're just using it as a day bag. Um, you know, you can just toss stuff in a little bit easier without everything in the middle. And you can fit a ton of stuff in here. Uh, one thing we would have liked to see, because this bag is so versatile, uh, would be some like compression straps or something on the side. Uh, we get that, you know, they probably didn't want to block the zipper. However, when this is in day pack mode, it's still like really wide at the bottom. Um, so if you could just like crunch it down a little bit, that would maybe help. Um, but you know, it's not too bad. So last thing to look at here is we have the laptop compartment. And this is a really nice laptop compartment. As you can see, it's suspended off the bottom of the bag here. So it's gonna, you know, be protected from any drops. Uh, you know, it's got some room to the sides here. Uh, so it's like floating in every direction. So no matter which way you drop your bag, it will be protected. And it is also very well padded. Um, so it's, yeah, no worries there. It can fit up to a 17 inch laptop. So it can really fit, you know, a 15 inch or 16 inch with a case on it in here, but we've never really felt the need to put a case on it. Um, just because it's so well padded and floating in every direction. So this is a 16 inch MacBook, and as you can see fits in no problem there. Um, to get the laptop out the easiest, it's really best to use um, the zippered area versus, you know, going through the entire top of the bag. You can just open up the zipper a little bit and just get quick access to your laptop there. And then in front of that, we have these two mesh pockets here, pretty stretchy. Uh, these work better when you're using it as a day pack because the middle part, you know, where all your clothes go, kind of take up the entire width of the bag. So if you have any bigger items in here, they're just not gonna fit as well. And they're gonna be harder to access with that, uh, you know, clothes thing in here. So again, this is only uh, having two compartments packed out. If we had all three, you know, it would probably come up to like here. Um, so you can see it, it just kind of blocks access to that. So these are great if you're using it in day pack mode. However, in travel mode, um, you know, these are best used for items you don't need quick access to. But yeah, in day pack mode, this is a great spot for tech items. Put some cords and chargers in here and any like big laptop chargers or anything like that in this bottom compartment. And uh, yeah, you, you can have quick access to it just from kind of unzipping the top down, get to it easy pull anything out you need and you're good to go. So this is a really versatile bag. Um, again, it's an all in one, one-stop shop. Um, you know, you get the camera cube, the clothes storage, the tech pouch, the dop kit. Um, so if you are somebody that already has all those items in, you know, from whatever brand you like, and you've got everything packed out perfectly how you have that. This may not be the bag for you if you are not using the accessories. Um, it does just have a little bit of a large sack feel to it. There's not any organization inside because you are supposed to be using the accessories. However, if you don't have all that gear already and it looks like all your stuff is gonna fit into this really nicely, this could be a great option for you. So there you have it, the Tropic Feel Shell Backpack. Check out packhacker.com for more information and best buying options that help support the channel at no additional cost to you. Link down below and we'll see you in the next video.